Okay, I'm going to show you a little bit about how I start the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto in the very beginning. And keep in mind, before we start, that all you get in the orchestra part is... And so you start right away. So, because they start out... You feel this beat. Which means then, if the uh, orchestra is continuing to do that, and they have 16th notes... Are those 16th notes? It might be eighth notes. Anyways, they have fast notes. And um, so because they're doing that, and because they're doing that consistently, you need to follow a little bit of that. With You can't go... I mean, I'm exaggerating, obviously, but it has to be pretty well in rhythm. So let me show you how I would start this. So just imagine the... And I apologize for those octaves. I, I guess I haven't played this for a while, so you never know what's going to happen, but I'll practice those later. So the beginning, let's, let's talk it through. So you first you start off... So think of that as a first thought, and then... So you got two thoughts now. We have the first one... And then... And what happens after that? The first thought comes back again. And then we have sort of a third thought that's in a little bit of an extension of these first two thoughts. And then, at this point, we have again... And so, let's go from the beginning again. We have one th first thought, second thought. And then first thought again, and then we have this third thought that we need to also break up. So now we're on the third, third thought. Um, so you can almost break that one up into two thoughts. You have the first thought. And then you have the second thought. And then that first thought comes back. And then we have yet another extension. And then, of course. So let me uh, let me recap then with every everything I've just talked about. So we start with a first thought. And the second thought. And then we go back to the first thought. Okay, now we're getting the third thought, which is broken up into individual thoughts. First thought. Second thought. First thought again. And then extension. So now, when I play it through, there are also some things that you need to do with your bow and with your and with your um, left hand. So, you see how much bow I'm using? I'm not I'm not keeping it consistent the whole time. That's going to give you a very sterile sound because if you keep your bow speed exactly the same, 
it's going to sound exactly the same. If you want to have a little bit of shape where if you were to sing it, um, excuse my, my intonation when I sing, but yum ba da ya da 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 right? There's a, there's a shape to it. it. It's not da 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 It's not flat. So when you're playing it, when you want to give a shape, as the, as the shape is curving over this way, you need to be increasing the amount of bow you're using. And as you hit the peak, that's about the most amount of bow that you're going to be using for each individual note. And then as you come back down, then you start to slow your bow down again. So let me show you, demonstrate once. So I'm starting my bow pretty slow. Faster, faster. And you need to also figure out where is the peak? What is the highest point of that curve? So I would contest and this is just my opinion, I would say that the, the peak is on the F sharp. So what I do is I save the, the most amount of bow for that top note. And then here, if you want to have a little bit of a you know, they call about they call it pulling at the heartstrings. What you can do is two things. When you're coming uh, from an up bow to a down bow, you can kind of accelerate a little bit into that bow. And the other thing that I'm doing with my left hand is I'm adding a little vibrato as soon as I hit that note. Because if I didn't add the extra vibrato, I could do all I want on this right hand, and it's not going to give that yearning sound that you can get from the combination of increased bow speed coming into the bow change, as well as a little bit of vibrato. And I really, really like that D sharp. So I take a little bit of time. So coming into it, okay now here we have the, this third thought that we decided was broken into individual pieces as well, first thought, second thought, third, first thought, extension. So the first thought should probably be louder than the, the second time that this thought comes back. So, in, in context, and that, and then here, where the third, first thought comes back, I bring it down. And I like to bring it down because it, it makes sense musically. Listen. And what I'm doing is, when I drop back down, you can hear a crescendo starting to build. And I'm only doing it a little bit at a time. Then you can really make it dramatic. You, you have this building uh, of um, intensity. You can feel the momentum coming. Uh, and, then, and then finally, it climaxes with and then I come off the string and come back on because this whole passage, this whole opening passage starting from going to I like to couple that or, or put all of these together in one group, one big phrase and then this next part in my opinion is the start of the second section, the second big phrase. So I'm, I'm breaking this up so when you put everything together, and this is what I demonstrated in the beginning of the video,
And that's how I opened with the Mendelssohn Violin Concerto. So I hope that helps. <laughs>